I am going to be showing everyone how to build five different micro background ships during Star Wars. In Pacific, two rebel ships, two empire ships, and one neutral faction ship. First ship I'm going to be showing off is the Pocket Star Destroyer, which is known in the fandom. There are two forms of it. There is the one with all its armor closed up and one with all its armor popped out. I'm going to show the closed armor one, but just to make the open one, you just moved move all the Polish amethysts one block out in a direction. Bring the center, build, hold it back. One, two, three, two. There we go. Now building this ship takes a while, but it's pretty good when it finished. Um, where is that? Ah, there it is. The blocks you use are, well, great concrete and polished amethyst. Let me check if the block patterns are right. Yes, and this one. There we go. in the center of oh, the center of this ship. So, how have you been since the last time we streamed? Uh, a bit stressed out. And, well, why why stretch stressed out? Just a lot of drama. Yeah. You can only take so much drama before, well, you start breaking. At least there's no llamas for our dramas. Really? I am uh. just going to ignore that. Problem with all this armor panels is it's kind of hard to tell where blocks go. Block there, block there, turn around. Wait a minute, did I get the dimensions right? It seems like your chat is rather active. Hi guys. Ay ay ay. <sighs> Sorry about the, well, not chatting, it's just, no, I, waking up. 10 a.m. Um, not that fun to wake up up early. Did my got Yep. And fly back over. <laughs> Getting stuck behind trains is never fun. Nope. It's probably the uh, one o'clock train that goes. 
by Swick. Probably. You make the most logic. Now, let me add the armor plating. Nope, it almost fell off this. It almost oh. fell off the ship I was building. Cannon hits it all around the ship. Okay, then two armor red panels. There, right? Yep. Then two armor panels up here, and then basically flip the same design underneath. It's armor plating. Put on. There we go. Now we just have to install the tail. And this ship. Yo, stuff with the entire ship looks like closed up, and well, you just move every. We are polishing amethyst and slab. It's just one block out in a certain direction. Like you want move panels left, panels right, and some to forward. The next ship I'm showing you is the Musai class destroyer, a Empire sh ship. You can probably tell by that by well, the iconic Empire Bridge logo. Yep, yep. I'm not well versed in every single Star Wars. Ship. Star Wars yep, ship, because there's just so many out there, but I, I find it kind of cool that you can create, like, all of them in Minecraft with the blocks that we have without, uh. Mods? Without mods. Yep, it takes a lot of sculpting jet to try to get the ships as accurate as possible, especially blurry texture varieties as well. They're blurry for a reason. The original person who made these ships knew for a fact that they were just going to be blurry textured, so he didn't add any details. So it leaves a wide open door or for whatever details you want add to the ships. This is not known as a store destroyer class. It's well, basically a support ship, which the Empire kind of lacks a lot of. Like seriously, if I was an Imperial officer, I would ask for, "Hey, high command, can you hand me some support ships so I can wipe out the rebels? I don't want all my expensive star destroyers becoming scrap pile." for scavengers hundreds of years later to pick up. So besides being parked on the track, and meow, how is everyone doing in chat today? So far, so good. Now, let me throw the bridge, which, well, the bridge on board these things are pretty simple to build. It's just a T. And add the last guns. 
uh, this ship have point defense cannons also, so this thing can actually take on starfires and not die. <laughs> because a rebel Y-wing or X-wing just came by and shoved a torpedo up its porthole. Which, seriously, the Empire should really fix that. ship I'm going to be showing you guys how to also build is the Rebel Light Destroyer ship which literally have the Apollo Mars pattern engine slapped onto the back so yeah pretty cheap ships and you know I'm using cobblestone for the engine port so it can actually be easily seen where the engines would actually go on these ships because well most of the textures look pretty much identical no let me uh oh, I'm missing a block there we go Tacos. Tacos are always a good thing. Yep. Also delicious. Curse it, Flam. So this ship is pretty much a well, a bubble. We'll design ship of well, scrap metal. No, well, not every ship is going to be at, at, at the level of Imperial, you know, grade. quality. Yeah. Though, even I questioned the Imperial grade that, well, the freaking TIE fighter die like flies. I mean, seriously, if you're going to have these things as mass swarms, you're supposed to keep the pilots, you know, somewhat alive and ready for the next fight, not flying out into space, choking to death. That's uh, because his ship blew up, or faulty part means his entire ship just went kaboom. Yep. And I forgot that part. Whoops. There we go. It only has one gun, and well, it's a destroyer slash transport. It poked to carry like a hundred troops to battle, but, uh, well, these things kind of have the same weakness as the Nebulon B. If you just shoot the neck at the bridge section to the engine, the entire ship would just go down. Which, that's the, mo that's the flaw of most of these rebel ships. They have a pretty obvious weak point in the neck region. Let me clear out my inventory. Oh. Hang on, where the... Oh. I'm having the wrong item. There we go. Now... Let me grab all the blocks I'm going to need. What is this? Ship here. Into the front, grab these. Now, guys, do know this is not a rebel ship or an imperial ship, it's a neutral faction ship. It's called the Dreadnought Class 6 variety. A civilian vehicle go that can carry whatever cargo or supply you're going to need to plant the plant basic. But the rebels have one because, well, they're rebels. They can capture ships by just doing hit and runs. 
it is actually longer than the other ships. Yep, so here's how to build it. And yes, it has a torpedo. And yes, rebel ships have these like small torpedo sizes to launch a missile. The well, Imperial ones uh, sadly don't. One, two, three, three blocks up. Find the center of this ship and plate the slab. There we go. And he hit thought of this ship. It have two cans to the port underneath of the port and starboard side and have several turbo laser cannons in places to protect the ship and well cargo and crew. That you know you don't want your crew and cargo it like saying carrying radioactive material to go out and everywhere in space. It's, it make an entire sector become uninhabitable. Uninhabitable. Blah, blah, blah. Words. Words are hard, and I, 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 I get that, you know. Some words are just hard to say, or your brain goes, yes, this is the word. But your mouth goes, no, this is how you say the word. Yeah. Basically, make... That entire sector is space, pretty much a death trap for anyone and who not wearing the right equipment to get in that area. Which, well, for the Empire, pretty bad when suddenly a massive tanker breaks open because of a malfunctioning part or a leaking container and an entire sector of the area is now contaminated. Yep. Yep. I'm throwing the guns. Two back here. Two down here by the proton torpedo tube. Front section made with, well, pretty durable armor. This ship can actually ram another ship and still be okay. Back section made with, well, the Empire quality armor of TIE Fighter grade. Equipment armor, so that section pretty vulnerable. The Empire, fine quality grade armor. If you're in the quality grade armor of barely bloody useless, hey, serious. I'm with better with I'm better getting myself a TIE Defender squad than TIE Fighters. It's in a ship on ship fight. Yep. As elite TIE Defenders would actually save my butt from well rebel pilots shooting me down. Don't want to get shot down while you're carrying, you know. Highly volatile cargo. Any cargo, really. I mean, think about it. If you, you know, live to see another day, you could, you know, be screwed and have a bounty on your head. See, Han Solo v. Jabba the Hutt. Yep. And the last. Ship I'm going showing you guys is a Mon Calamari Corvette. Now I know there is no actual Mon Calamari Corvette. It's a background ship that was seen during during uh, Star Wars. Wars. It was one of the background ship that attacked Endor. I see. You don't get to see it that often because, well, it's a blurry texture. Uh, but you can see it. In the background. Now.
Now, this ship is pretty, well, not big, but pretty long to build as well. It's a Mon Calamari ship. They go with elegant in style and also make things pretty big. Even for ships that are supposed to be for one class only. One, two, three. Building a copy of this ship right on top of the original. Yep, yep, yep. Makes it more space efficient. Remove the bottom texture so I can actually see where uh, I need to place all the uh, amethysts compared to the polished one. Add well, this is a warship, not a pleasure cruise. Add what Mon Calamari ships are designed for. Bloody flies. Yeah, that's a summer for you. Yep. Ow! Smack my hand because of a flying. Regretted the choice. Stupid flies. So I wish you could just do shoe fly, don't bother me, and they would actually not bother you. Nope, that's not what nature intended them. They intended them to be the most annoying bugs in the universe. Yep. Right next to the mosquito. Oh boy, I love mosquitoes, said no one ever. Yep. I can agree with that. No one ever agreed. Oh, look how adorable this mosquito is. Are uh, they drinking my blood to death? They're uh, drinking me to death. And for all my blood. They might be carrying toxic diseases. Oh, boy. Yep. Anyways, uh, since the, well, the ships I built are background ships or from, well, other sources like Star Wars Legends or other stuff. For the background ships, they don't have any stat lines, so you guys in the comments can put any stat lines you want on these ships. I just give you what. I know you to remain the 3D model and notice these textures. He did the 3D model, I built what the ship should look like. Because these ships are very interesting, to say the least. They kind of look it. Yeah, and well, like most 
uh, prop ships that were in the background. The person who was making them didn't care what their texture looked like, so he just slapped on whatever he could with an nearly pencil drawn it. Either pencil drawn or markered each section. Just well, because, well, yeah, because sometimes it's not worth fully detailing background things when you're only going to see it like from really far away. Out of your far away or very blurry seeing it. Which, well, I have to give prop to that person who at least tried to make some sort of interesting ship in the background to catch your eye. I got the textures right. And now to slap on all the, well, various engine lights. Because this ship has a lot of them. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> it, uh, two more engines. I saw instead two more panels. Whoopsie. Yeah, it happens. Most of these uh, chips either have blurry textures or you can do whatever you want with them. Oh, bloody rainstorm. Yep, rainstorms are kind of annoying sometimes in Minecraft. Yep. And for a last ship, I'm going to be showing you guys how to build. I'm going to be showing you guys how to build a CIS type of ship. The CIS cargo transport. A massive ship that showed up during the Clone Wars era. As it basically what happened in a Death Star a CIS naval factory had a Kid. And, and they decide, you know what, what cut this Death Star site ship in half and make get a massive cargo transport. And so was born this ship. You know, it only CIS exclusive for a, well, pretty obvious reason. It's a massive cargo transport supporting organic allies. Kind of important to keep your organic allies alive and still fighting. You don't want them to starve death because the ship that was carrying the cargo just suddenly blew up in space. Yep, no exploding in space. Yep. That's the one of the things I do not like about summer besides the heat is the bugs. The hordes and hordes of bugs. Aye. They are annoying and they are important. Because, well, bigger creatures eat the bugs. So, can you creatures do a faster job of doing that? 
Nah, not everybody is, uh, you know, not every creature eats a lot of bugs. I know that, but still. I have a question. Sure. I am currently in the nether on, you know, the, the multiplayer world. Okay. And I see an Enderman. Can they spawn naturally, or did this one decide that he was just going to go through the, uh... Portal? Nether portal. Yeah. Um, no, they can spawn naturally in the update. Okay, because I'm looking around, and it's like, random Enderman. Hello! And then, screaming death. Well, since I didn't stare at him... Yeah, ow. I just smacked my face. Well, don't do that. That's silly. I didn't mean to. I know. Ah! Fell off the build. Yep, I just fell in lava. Ooh. Out. But I managed to get out before. You boiled to death. Yep. Is that... I don't know what type of, well, symbol I made with the blue brick, but you might be able to, well, figure out what type of symbol I made. Hmm. Yeah. I'm gonna walk over there and look. I have no idea. Neither do I. It just felt right to building the ship like this. Hang on, let me check the... Bloody coughing. Yep, that's what allergies do, it does. Yep. The Adventures of Tacos in Spaceland. I'm responding to people in chat. We've got a lively chat, actually. Yep. Because the top and bottom half of this it kind of mirror each other.
I'm just trying to finish up this, uh, the, uh, ship to massive, massive halves of it. Wait. Well, to be fair, some ships are just super big. Like, seriously, this ship is nearly two halves of a Death Star. If you took the Death Star, cut it in half, and then then welded a Star Destroyer bridge in the center of it. Maybe Somebody cannot win in chat by, you know, they can't get their tacos because everything is going wrong. Oh lordy lord. And that's terrible. Yep. Everybody needs their tacos. Yep. Let me get the uh, fight engine. Add the bridge, add the two engines. Flip on this side and add no, the remaining. This. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's how you build the CIS cargo transport. Also. Yeah, curse it now. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, there we go. A uh, ship that I saw during during a a book I had a book I looked at for once and caught my in. It's it was for the solo movie, but it got cut. A modified B wing wing that was big enough to hold small fighter tr craft on board. To fly around. Out. Oh. Actually, unfortunately, a lot of things from Solo got cut or changed at the last moment because the director wasn't doing a very good job at um, directing. Yeah. However, I really did actually like Solo for what it was. Yeah. It was a heist movie set up in. The Star Wars oh, universe. Star Wars. Yeah. Which also explains how Han Solo managed to get the Millennium Falcon from Lando Calrissian. He said that one time during a Sabacc game, which he did want it during a Sabacc game. Yep. Uh, somebody wants to know just how many ships are on this world that you're building in since you seem to have, you know... A multi-year world going over there. Well, this world was built oh, with uh, the updated mine compared to the other, compared to the multi-world, so not that many spaceships. Though, it also 
gonna help that this planet, this world is nearly a massive ocean. <laughs> Since, so, uh, uh, building a bunch of ground vehicles and stuff like that, uh, not a good idea. As well. If I did that, then everything would start going blub, 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 blub. Now we start having to make something that can actually, you know, float and such. Yeah. To be fair, there's also some underwater crafts in, you know, spaceships in Star Wars. Underwater spaceships. I. Underwater ships. Like the Mon Calamari submersible ships or the Empire. Rather ingenious idea of using an AT-AT body and making it a submarine. Which I have to give credit to the person who decided that would be a good idea. Because, well, it was a good idea. Because, well, you could literally have pilots literally jumping under the sea and basically if there's a rebellion on sea worlds just drop these ships into the water they'll take care of it and well they would have the firepower of an AT-80 yep ow stupid flies Now, uh, guys, I don't know what to call these, uh, small f fighters that come from a, uh, modified suit up B wing bomber that, well, have, have one of its wing sides be dropping these fighters off. They kind of look like, uh, fish piranhas, but I don't know what to call them. So, if you guys can come up with a name, for these uh, rebel ships, uh, they're supposed to be used by the Sky Pirates. It's, and the modified Big Wing actually shows you how the Sky Pirates, you know, jump from planet to planet. Kinda makes sense. I'm like, wait a minute, where the hell are the Sky Pirates coming from every time? Because, well, they have to have a ship to get to each different planet. Yeah. If they get, can't, you know, whoop, like they have a teleporter on them or something, because, well, there is no Star Wars teleporter. Yep, because the closest thing to that we have in Star Wars is hyperdrives, even then it's still not teleporters in the sense that we would associate it with. They are basically jumping through, well, basically. The like other, like base, the hyper speed. Basically, they're going the speed of light to get to place to place. Yep. It's and they're traveling well, uh, well documented routed routes. So they're pretty much going on pretty easy to determine pathways. Yeah. There are smaller hyperspace routes and such, but. They're less well traveled and well less documented, so there is a bigger error of mess up to just launch yourself into a sun or something like that. Or into a black hole. Or Don't a lot of the ships have protection against that nowadays? In Star Wars? Yeah. yeah. They have, though back then they did not, so a lot of their civilian craft that were went out to try to colonize other planets. Sadly, a uh, vast majority of them didn't come back. Those that did report that they kind of needed more protection, and it went for their captains, you know, making a sudden pull out a hyperdrive move, they would have just, well, crashed. So, Kuroth Drive Yards basically added, well, they weren't around back then, Kuroth Drive Yards, but they're the closest thing I could think of. 
organization that was still kicking around. They installed on their hyperdrives a merge a emergency feature when it detects a gravitational pull of like a planet or something, it automatically pulled the ship out of hyperdrive. That directly saved a lot of people's lives from, you know, crashing into planets or, well, what else celestial bodies are flying around. Huh, yeah. A YouTuber asked this to everyone, which even I thought were weird odd. Why aren't there Star Wars submarines? Now, what he meant by that was a a spaceship that can stay in hyperspace flying around through it and launching torpedoes basically with the cheapest hyperdrive to pull them out. Basically, it cross reference is everything like okay is this a planet no is this an asteroid belt no then the ship launch torpedoes launch it torpedoes toward the ship while staying in hyperspace these things get pulled out and smashes into ships i can see this being a freaking nightmare to deal with and you will basically be trying to catch a ship that's staying in the hyper staying in hyperspace while it basically flies around launching torpedoes at you, and you don't even know where it's going to show up next. I can see this thing being a freaking nightmare for both every single faction and that deals with it. Can't you, Zach? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a slight problem when you, well, let's say a ship door was open during hyperspace and you want to take a peek out. You would be pulled away from the ship pretty quickly and be, well, be thrown out in a random area in hyperspace. So basically you get thrown somewhere when you get pulled out into hyperspace. Well, <laughs> those uh, old Star Wars ships also did not have any protection from the Weirds or Starboard. A phantom-like creature that hunts, who detects Jedis and, well, immediately tries to eat them. Sounds interesting. No one has any clue what the hate Star Wars are and why they hate Jedi so much that they will eat them. Several theories, even by the Jedi, just that there might be a force of darkness, but other just that they're just ghosts or something pretty bad happened that person to turn them into a star weird. Nowadays, uh, Star Wars ships have some protection against it, but, well, it's kind of hard to stop a, like, a wraith-like creature popping in on your ship if, and just going around killing something, killing a Jedi or force sensitives. Even the Sith are not immune to these things, and it will kill them also. Which, uh, well, it's... Your massive Sith, Sith transport carrying hundreds of Sith toward the location, and one of these things popped in. Oh boy, your hundred Sith are going to be reduced in quite considerable numbers. What's a this ship was carrying twenty legions on board, and by the time the Star Weird got taken care of, or Jet Side, you know, I'm bored. I'm leaving. You would be reduced down from 10 to 3. That is a abysmal amount of casualties. Oh, he has went out. Hang on. Okay. <laughs>
Yeah, it's all the sinus pressure. <laughs> yeah. I think tonight it's going to be a antihistamine for those who need it. Yep. Guys, if you're wondering what well, all these other builds are. Bless you. <laughs> ah, curses allergies. I just kind of looked at... <laughs> ah. I kind of would inspire the well, all the uh, vehicles with uh, well, green concrete on them. Yeah. These are basically World War Two vehicles, like the World War Two uh, sub tank. Like that could go in water and drive on land. <laughs> and also the uh, sub transports that do the exact same thing except they transport a lot of infantry to the battle. What? <sighs> and they're currently landing on this island to refuel and restock whatever they get. But, well, <laughs> look at this island. It has nothing on it. Aside sand, grass, clay, and, well, gravel. Aside from that, nothing else. And what showed up? It, well, the Sisters of Battle from Warhammer. Basically, female nuns. Basically, female warrior nuns. He will beat the tar out of you just because, hey, they felt like it. Not again. <laughs> what small squad is sucking the sand again? <laughs> yep. That was a glitch I thought got rid of where suddenly Armistands go right through sand. It always seems to be on sand for some reason, nothing else. Stupid gnat. If you're wondering, I have two rhinos with rockets on them. It's standard uh, assault cannons on them or that such I have something that the sisters of battle are pretty famous for a rhino with the organ cannon which basically is a massive organ that fires missiles into the air and crushes you and I built one German tank which Actually, kind of made me laugh because of the name. The Dicker Max, the Fat Max, or the Thick Max. It's the same tank name. Just, jeez. <laughs> that caught me off guard when I heard that. It's a tank destroyer, but it was originally designed to blow up bunkers. <laughs> Which, uh, <laughs> kind of made me laugh because, how does a tank blow up a bunker? The massive complex is going under the ground. The only thing you would basically be blowing up if you shot a bunker would be the topmost part of it. And I also have some, uh, well, updated dreadnoughts are much smaller. And I built a rather interesting transport. It's like a ship build, but I built the ship backwards. And I kind of gave it a iconic logo. MOP fans will immediately know what type of logo I made. Well, put on.
And I also built the Tyranids. Well, a bunch of flying Tyranids, since I kind of know that they don't have any water types of Tyranids, which kind of limits them because, well, this is a water planet. The guy, the infantry men are going to well, basically drop in and then blub 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 blub. Drown to death because both their members are ground mates. So I just built them a bunch of air units. Look like alien birds or something like that. Or bats. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Stupid phlegm. Well, how about we call it here for now, and then next time we'll show off some more builds and build some more things on camera. How about that? Sure. Blech. Uh, this is Chibiace, and over there is Evan, and we shall see you next time when we are going to build surprises, because who knows what we're going to build. Agreed. Bye now. Bye, everyone. And don't get... Look on Chibiace, on Chibiace. Bye.